Hello again, we're back. I'm Peter Galante. And this is Cassandra Coop. And we're going to go through the other two web pages we talked about. So we're going to just briefly zip through here, but I'd like you to spend some time and read these things. So we're going to scroll up to the page right now, and we're going to get to uh, the basically the I want to talk about how shutter speed really affects your motion and motion blur. So again, here's a picture of the waterfalls with a slow shutter speed and the water becomes blurred. And on the other side, it's uh, some kind of electric spark uh, kind of a thing where you can see that electricity moves quite fast. So in order for that not to be blurred, you'd have to have a very high shutter speed. So let's scroll down to the page. And this I wanted to uh, spend a little bit of time with because it's setting there the aperture settings from f22 to 1.4 and each one of those stops is is one complete step right from 22 to 16 and that means it says here in the relative light there that you it's twice as much light as f22 and then at f11 again it doubles again so it's four times more light than f22 and then all the way down to f1.4 where it says 256 times more light than that at f22 and then you can see the relative shutter speeds if i wanted if i was at 1 second at f5.6 right and i went to 8 and i wanted the same exposure i have to double the time because the aperture is letting in half the amount of light so this chart is kind of a good thing to take a look at and we've also put some cheat sheets on D2L, which you can take a look at, which also explain the same sort of thing. But this concept, you have to wrap your head around, that aperture uh, and, and shutter speed, you have to work. And our first two assignments are going to be based on, on using the aperture and shutter speeds. Okay, so we're going to just scroll through here a little bit more to the ISO. We didn't talk much about the ISO, which is the sensitivity of light, but in order for your pictures to be the highest quality, you want to use the lowest ISO you can to capture your uh, image because it's always going to give you the highest quality. So here's an example. At There's what we call image noise. It's just random firing of the chips. So then if you look at the high ISO, it's maybe a little bit hard for you to see, but you can see multicolored spots, RGB, red, green, blue spots in there. That's noise, right? So that's the trade-off. The more you raise your ISO, the more noise you're going to get. Now, if you're in low light, you don't have a choice. So it, that's the you're going to balance ISO with uh, shutter speed and uh, aperture. And... Um, those are the those are the the major tasks that we're going to deal with in in our first two assignments you know understanding this we're going to pop over to the next website and we're going to put these links again on d2l and we're going to scroll through here because again this one is wikihow has really great information on all the parts of your camera and some really good things and we're just going to scroll down really quickly through here and because there's some uh, what did we see at the bottom that I liked? Oh yes, this was the the pictures here of the um, of the the water thing. Okay, so here at 125th of a second on the fountain, you can see that the water droplets are kind of frozen in space, as opposed to eighth of a second, you can see now that the water is smoothed out. So that's exactly one of the one of our, our first assignments is going to be dealing with this. And let's go to the next picture here. Keep going. No, no, no. I want to go to the, the, the motorcycle. Can we get to the motorcycle? Okay. So now we're on the motorcycle here. And so this is uh, a technique which is really kind of nice because the motorcycle is moving pretty, pretty quickly. And what the photographer did is he or she uh, focused on the on the motorcycle and move the camera as as the motorcycle was passing by so the relative motion of the of the uh, motorcycle is is you know not very blurred but the background which is further away and moving much the distance it's moving relative to the camera is much bigger so it's 
it's blurred. And of course, the background isn't moving. It's the camera that's moving that's created that blur. So that's a really nice thing. We call that panning, which is another great uh, tool to use. It's, it takes some practice, but it's worthwhile uh, doing. So at this point, we're just going to close this off. We're going to post these things, and then we're going to post some pictures for the first two assignments and try to explain that. All right, ciao.